All right, good morning. I'm going to talk a little bit today, at least I think I am. I'm going to talk about paradise found. You know, we say that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden lived in paradise. Um, now, for myself personally, I think Southern California is paradise. For me, every day I say, this is the promised land, and I'm so glad that I have arrived here. I love Southern California. In fact, if you were here uh, this past week, uh, it was an extraordinary week. It was just so beautiful. And every day when I was out walking, I tried to really be in a consciousness of gratitude and appreciation and love for, for the experience. You know, I believe that all the spiritual power that there is, is actually within us. And we could use this to reveal more paradise in our life. But there seems to be, as, as there so often is on the spiritual path, a paradox of control. You know, of, 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 uh, do, do I control or is this where I let go? Is this where I hold on tightly or is this where I open up and allow something greater? You know, so letting go, uh, uh, letting go of what to do. Oh my gosh. I think we are, so really the direction we want to go, I believe, is that what we are after is a realized consciousness, a consciousness that has had this profound realization of our oneness that does not allow for any duality at all whatsoever. See, when we're in fear, we forget God, right? What do we fear? Oh my God, so many things. I mean, who, who, who has time for the list? You know, we fear sickness and lack and asteroids, right? Lightning, um, you know, you can, you can fill in your own what thing you might be afraid of. But the truth is, I, we, we have no life of our own. Our life is an emanation of the life of God. We are part of the one life that is God. Now, the world's thinking, the world consciousness, the race consciousness says that we are just this little person here and that we could probably be lost and our life can be lost. In truth, that is not so. That is not so at all. You can never be lost. You are an expression of God. You are an emanation of the Most High. You have place here. Humanly, we argue, oh, but I think I could be lost. I think I could be lost. Spiritually, no. Ernest Holmes says in our textbook that Christ is our true identity, and the Christ in us is never lost. Now, what is that Christ? Christ is the mind that fully knows I am one with God and expresses that oneness through the energy of unconditional love out into the world. One with God, expressed as love, that's the Christ. So things external will appear to uh, confound us. Things that are outside of us will certainly appear to confront us. And this is why we want to, on a regular basis, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That, you know, Ernest Holmes is encouraging us to turn our attention inward so that we too will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, like it says, I live and I move and I have my being in God. I have no life apart from God and neither do you. Humans look outside of God for their good. We love to look outside of God for our love, for our supply, for our security, for our health. We think everything out here is going to be the solution. And what Science of Mind says that all of these things out here are effects and that's just fine. But the solution, which is the cause, first cause is always within us. In the Gospel of John, it says, in the world you will have tribulation, but have courage. I have conquered the world. Right? We too will conquer. I, that I, is the mind that knows oneness with God. When we know oneness, we conquer externals. Think about this. When we know that we are so one with God and there could be nothing else. There really is no external problem because that awareness of oneness that we are so committed to is what overcomes the seeming external difficulty. And, and we've overcome that. What do we have? We have the experience of paradise in our life. I think it is our contact with the indwelling presence of God that is the source of all good in our life. And we have tribulation because we believe that there are other powers operating in our life besides God. You know, we think, oh my God, I have to deal with all this heredity or all this error or all this disease, or that there are wars or there are false appetites, there are addictions, there's weather. 
Years ago, I used to work at the Huntington Beach Church with a wonderful minister, Dr. Peggy Bassett. And Peggy Bassett was famous for saying, we do not ask you to leave your brains outside the door when you come to our church. Yeah, she would say that all the time. And, and what she was really talking about, I believe, is that we temper healing with wisdom. We're working with principles of healing, but we also have to be smart because we're in the world. And everybody has to find that perfect place of balance where we're tempering healing with the wisdom that we have. You know, there's only one self, and that is our true self, that, that's our God self, right? And we are all connected in the one life that is God, the one spirit that is God. Literally, what we do to another, we are ultimately doing to ourselves. What we withhold from another person, we are withholding from ourselves. So, you know, God, spirit, love, is the essence of life in every person whether they know it or not. And I do believe that because we are on a path of consciousness, it becomes our job to know that about them, to know that for them. Also, in the Gospel of John, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So in Science of Mind, we have discovered the power of the word. You know, your words have power. We all know that. We have an agreement around that. The word of God, though, becomes tangible in our experience. So here we are, we're faced with any of a number of particular difficulties. <clears throat> the first thing we have to do, and all the metaphysical spiritual teachers tell us this, is we turn within for revelation. We turn within to be informed by spirit within us. We can't just stay out here. Okay, I have a difficulty. And what most people do is they have a difficulty and they stay out here in the land of the difficulty trying to solve the difficulty. But that's what Einstein said, you can't solve a problem at the level of consciousness that created the problem. We have to go to a higher place, and that higher place is that we turn within, right? To know the kingdom of God within us. And yes, we have to be patient. <coughs> From the work of Emma Curtis Hopkins, Emma gives us this technique where she says, first you have to give a strong denial, right? Say what you don't believe. So I would say, all right, I do not believe in disease. Then, she says, you have to affirm what you do believe. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't believe in disease. I believe in the perfect life of God within me. All right? So there, your, your denial is what you don't believe. I do not believe in disease. My affirmation is what I do believe. I believe in the perfect life of God within me. And then the piece that we add to that is you back it up with some statement of truth. For it is written. Right? I like a for it is written. For it is written, I, might, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Right? So you work along those lines. You deny, you affirm, and then you back it up with a statement of truth. And so I can go around saying that all day long. I do not believe in disease. I believe in the perfect life of God within me. For it is written, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, that feels really good. Right? Now, in the process of doing this work, we have to be patient. We have to know that God, the kingdom of God is within us. And the word that we are speaking, right, will impart itself to us from within. Then the word of God is abiding in our consciousness. So we don't go outside for the word. We turn our attention inward and ask for that highest word of God within us to be revealed. You know, in other words, another way to say this is, what's the truth I need to know that will make me more free? Is there a spiritual truth that if I were in possession of now, I would be free from these circumstances. I would be free from these conditions that I am dealing with. Well, of course there is. Now, as we keep our consciousness filled with the word of God, we attract a greater good that is always flowing from God to us. This is why we fill our consciousness with the word of God on a daily basis over and over again. So we are not victims of the race consciousness. We are filled with a higher transmission, and we have to get filled with that higher transmission on a daily basis because the race consciousness, just by nature of its weight, will pull us down into that thinking, right? And so we don't want to be victims of the race consciousness. This is, this is, you know, people who are victims of the race consciousness, they blame God for their troubles. You know, they think God visits them with misfortune and pain and lack. You know, well, when we think like that, we have truly forsaken God. God never forsakes us. Every time we put the power in some external thing, we have forsaken God. Where is there a power we fear? Where is there a person we fear? Where is an event 
we have concern over? Where is there a thing that we think, ooh, that's, that's really uh, worrisome for me? The truth is, we have within us God, and, uh, and that God that is within each and every one of us is greater than all external conditions. Are we so arrogant that we believe that what we fear is greater than the God that we have? You know, that, that what we fear has more power than God? You know, in that case, we have made our God very, very small. And, you know, I'm always encouraging people to get a bigger God. But in the process of getting a bigger God, I realize I have to encourage people also that to get a bigger God, you have to expand your faith. You have to grow your faith. So, so a bigger God has more power is another way of saying as my faith increases, there is more spiritual power within me. Jesus said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and render unto God that which is God's. So this is a spiritual universe, not a physical universe. And the physical level is filled with the appearances of other things being in charge of our life, other things being in power of our life, other things being in charge of our good, our health, uh, whether we get to have an abundance of supply or be happy or have love. In science of mind, to say we worship, um, well, or maybe I have to say, well, what is it that we worship in science of mind? Well, we take the statement in the Bible quite seriously where it says, the place where on you stand is holy ground. And we have the capacity to realize that God, that spirit, is the law and cause of all that is. This is keeping the word of God alive in our consciousness. Maybe a way to say this simply is like it says in Genesis. God made whatever God made, and he saw that it was good. So we could look at our life and say, you know what? God made this, therefore it is good. It has no other purpose. God made this, it is good. Um, I think this is keeping the word of God alive, you know? Then we're, because if we keep that word alive in our consciousness, if we're doing the denial, the affirmation, the statement of truth, what happens is we will get lifted above the human scene and into the mystical consciousness of oneness. Remember, God does nothing to the error. I pray, I affirm, I meditate, I visualize, I do all these spiritual practices. It is not to get God to do something different. God is being God 100% of the time. I'm sure that it is a more than full-time job. God is not going to be influenced by my prayer or by your prayer. We say, well, why bother praying? Because it changes us from the inside out. Every time we pray, it's like we're being rewired from the inside out. God is a principle of life and never stops being life. God is a principle of abundance and never stops being the abundance of the whole universe. God is a principle of love and never stops just radiating the love that God is out to us. So we're seeking to be filled with truth, which is our spiritual power. You know, truth that lies in and as our consciousness. You know, and when that truth is predominant within us, the seeming negatives cannot exist. There's nothing within us that vibrates at that same frequency. They, they, there's just no resonance there. You know, darkness can only exist in the absence of light. But if you are being the light, or as our friend Jeffrey Paul Whitman often says, if you are being the big, forgive me, ass love and light that you are intended to be, then there can be no darkness in the presence of that big ass love and light. There, I've just said it boldly. The light in us is the spiritual presence. You know, as metaphysicians, we look at the master teacher, Jesus. He did not fight at darkness. He did not fight error. He did not fight disease. Very simply, he forgave it. <sighs> People love to say, yeah, but what about, you know, the money changers in the temple? Jesus surely must have been mad, really upset there. Consciousness is the temple, right? Consciousness is the temple. And we have to throw all negative and destructive qualities out of our consciousness. This is not about some other consciousness. It's about our consciousness, the negative and destructive tendencies. 
See, I believe spiritual power in us comes when we realize the presence of God, and in this presence, there is no opposite. Really, there, in this presence of God, there is no lack. In the presence of God, there is no disease. In the presence of God, there is no error. We want to get to this high level in our own consciousness. Then we don't believe in these things. And if we are so convinced with every cell, fiber, tissue of our being, that these things do not exist, that they are not the truth that God created, they will be completely eliminated from our consciousness and we will not have them in our life. Otherwise, you know, if we don't do that, we're just slipping back, praying to God to remove some external condition, some problem in our human consciousness. So Jesus said to Pilate, Thou couldst have no power over me unless it were given to you from God from above. Unless it were given to you by God from above. Things outside of us have no power over us unless we give them power. Look at the things in our life that we, that, that we think of as a power. You know, things like disease and lack. And claim boldly, this is not a power over me. You are not a power over me. God is the one and only power operating in my life. See, it's the will of God for each and every one of us that we be whole and complete and express perfectly. It's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. But we have to be quiet and confident in order to receive it. Mother Teresa used to say, God is a friend of silence. I think it would really serve us to be a really good friend of silence because that's where we hear the voice of God within us speak to us, guide us, and tell us how much it loves us. Right? So we're not going to fight at the error. We're going to know God in the midst of all of this is mighty. Paradise is here right now. Let's enjoy it. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a minute, recognizing that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving intelligence, that God within us is the truth about each and every one of us. We are emanations of God's love and light and healing activity. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, the father-mother principle of life, I speak the word. Not only are we connected with God, we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And in this awareness of our connection with the infinite mind of God, I speak the word that healing is upon us this day, that our hearts and minds are open and we release anything that doesn't serve us, any thought, idea, habit pattern, way of being. If it does not serve the greater good, we let it go here and now. It has no place in us. And we welcome a greater expression of God's light and love and healing energy into every aspect of our life. We are simply here for God to be God by means of us. And so in this awareness, I speak the word that whatever it is that troubles us today, we lay it on the altar of consciousness, knowing that with God, all things are possible. We include in our prayer today family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, and we affirm God's perfect presence right where they are, surrounding, filling, uplifting, healing, meeting every need. We let our prayer, this treatment, be a blessing in the world that we live in. Because we know the law of mind carries this word forward, we claim peace for ourselves and all people everywhere. We claim an abundant supply for all people. We claim harmonious relationships. We claim good health. We claim an awareness of our connection with something greater than we are, and yet we are all a part of it. I give thanks that this is the truth. We let our prayer surround the globe, touching all people everywhere, all circumstances, knowing that God is present in all of it. We are blessed to be together today in consciousness, I believe, that we all get lifted by being together. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. 
blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have.